Recently, I visited the poorest neighborhood in all of Japan, where 80% of residents are homeless or on welfare, and the average age of people here is over 60 years old. Right in the heart of one of Japan's richest cities is a completely different world, and today we're getting a look closer than ever before. I've only seen video footage of housing in the Japanese slums, but today, we're taking a look ourselves. Japan is one of the wealthiest countries in the world, but the difference between rich and poor is huge, especially here in Japan's largest homeless encampment that no one has ever heard of. So we, here we have the high-rise buildings and on the other side of the river, this. Homeless villages scattering the Tama River and into the forest. There are over 1,000 people living like this just north of Yokohama. Imagine your whole house being washed away. Completely exposed to the elements, typhoons and flooding. This is how people are surviving in these invisible communities. This is the side of Japan you are not supposed to see. Welcome to Kawasaki and Yokohama's slum, Kotobukicho. Exiting Ishikawa Station in Yokohama and heading west, this neighborhood won't immediately strike you as unusual except for the large number of elderly people walking around. But the buildings and roads are in good condition and it doesn't look like it would be one of the poorest neighborhoods in Japan. In fact, on the surface level, it looks rather clean. There's actually people out here cleaning. <laughs> they don't have to be cleaning. That guy was just picking some trash up just because he wanted to. Despite being a poor area, people really seem to respect the streets a lot more than I saw in other slums like Nishinari in Japan. Even the giant heaping piles of garbage had mostly been cleaned up, but this is all on the surface level. I wanted to know how people were actually living here in the low budget government housing. And little did I know, that opportunity was just around the corner. こんにちは。皆さん優しいですね。何度か挨拶してくれました。いろんな人に。あの、ロシアではないですけど、私はアメリカ出身です。アリスです。よろしくお願いします。はい。あの、コドブキ町に住んでるんですか? わあ、ベテランですね。ホームレス。ああ、なるほど。え、あの、なんかちょっと興味深い話ですね。ことぶき町の歴史。10年15年前に。15年前にどんな感じでしたか今と全然違いますかちょっと違いますね。ちょっと
あ時々会いに来ますか娘さんは日曜日あったよああよかったですこれは冷蔵庫ですね冷蔵庫,冷蔵庫電子レンジ、はい、オーブンオーブン全部ありますね、はい、普通ですよ食べ物も入ってるし、はい、あの考えてるような恐ろしい場所じゃないですようん確かにそうですねみんないい人たちだし、うんうん、そ清潔だよそこに沖縄湯ってちゃんと銭湯もあるし500円で入れるしはいみんな清潔だよ、はい、全然イメージ違うんですよイメージと違いますステレオタイプですねお,お邪魔しましたいいいいお邪魔しました面白いでしょ面白いです本当にだからここはビレッジですビレッジいい感じですね、まあ、普通の日本人はお隣さんの名前がわからないしあまり話してないここはみんなさ朝起きたら「おはようございますおはようございますこんにちは<笑>今日はいい天気ですねみんな仲いいよビレッジだっていうのすごいゴミいいことだと思いますゴミンビレッジみんなが言ってる話は嘘だからね信用しちゃダメだよ<笑> I did not expect that at all. I did not expect that at all. That was amazing. What hospitality? I think they just want to change what people think about this place. It has such a bad reputation in Japan. So, if you didn't get a chance to, make sure you check out my video on Nishinari and my video on Sanya. There are also two major slums here in Japan. Make sure you subscribe for more videos like this. We're breaking down stereotypes, we're going to the places that people don't usually go. We're seeing a different side of Japan and I hope you're along for the ride. And there's Luke, nomadic gaijin. <laughs> Luke is showing me around here or, or chaperoning me. <laughs> making sure. You're making sure I stay safe. I, I, wouldn't, right. I wouldn't come here without you. That's right. <laughs> so make sure you subscribe to Luke's channel. He's helping me out. Nomadic gaijin right here. Hey. <laughs> Konnichiwa. We're getting a lot of hellos. Hi, what's your name? Hi. What's your name? I'm Alyssa. Yeah. Alyssa. Lisa. Alyssa, nice Alyssa. to meet you. Uh, nice to meet you. How are you? <laughs> I don't feel really intimidated walking around here. No. It, nobody's like looking at us out of, you know, a feeling, what are you doing here? It's more like, hey, what are you doing here? <laughs> peace, peace. <laughs> <laughs> peace, peace, peace. Hi. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> yeah, that's the Some feeling I get. Hospitality. <laughs> definitely, Sorry. definitely. So this is actually something that's really rare, even within different slums in Japan. It's a shower room where you can pay to have a shower for a couple of minutes. You put a coin in, and the water comes out. So you get five minutes for 100 n. It never rests. It's always open all year round. How convenient is that? laundry services there's cheaper vending machines they have food being sold from the vending machines and there's showers and very cheap hostels so this area is definitely made for the elderly people that are living here once again i see a vending machine selling newspapers put your money in press the button and boom have you ever seen that before luke in 15 years here in japan <laughs> actually i've never seen that before yeah it's very special <laughs> areas have that so here we have a wheelchair next to the pachinko parlor which is really unfortunate because you know a lot of people are getting the assistance they need and then it's being wasted at gambling facilities like this gambling on racing boats is one of the highest risks and highest rewards the people that have a serious addiction to gambling usually come here they must have put this here purposefully knowing that there's a lot of gambling addicts wow that's kind of sad it's the nicest building on the block so this is something that i have seen in japan but perhaps not this and this yeah. is the the drink of choice this is literally something you'll never see outside of the slum area so no. very very rarely yeah. that in a vending machine that is, is an it? incredible amount of alcohol this i've never seen this in a lawson before oh, wow. yeah just all of this this is this seems to be the most popular one yeah it's far. just it's just uh, a lot i've never seen this much this is not normal alcohol gambling mental illness running from loan sharks old age there are many reasons why people find themselves in the housing projects in kotobukicho but I wanted to know what happened to those that are less fortunate. 
So we took a trip to the other side of the river, Kawasaki, on the Tama River, where there is the biggest homeless encampment in all of the country that no one's really ever heard of, even though there are 1,000 people living here. Imagine being 65, 70 years old and having to climb up that. My grandparents couldn't do that. There's no way. No. It's easy to fall. You get hurt. So you had no idea this kind of stuff existed. I've seen little bits of this, but I've never seen anything like this. this and you've been here for 15 years. Yeah. It's wild, right? Yeah. I imagine maybe the people that are visiting this park don't even know that that exists. I don't, I don't think so. Do they know about the, the forest? The scariest part about this is the Tama River bamboo forest. It's absolutely shocking. You see, back in 2019, a super typhoon ripped through eastern Japan, came to Kawasaki, and completely flooded out the Tama River for miles and miles, destroying all of the homeless encampments and displacing everyone that lived there. And this is all that's left. I didn't actually take this footage, but it's a grim reminder of what still remains here today. Bicycles and garbage and alcohol. It looks like this area, this little shack has suffered some major tree damage perhaps in 2019 and now it's abandoned. Here we have the high-rise buildings and on the other side of the river this and they have no protection whatsoever from typhoons from flooding so when this floods out your home's gone imagine your whole house being washed away it's so out of sight out of mind That's and right. to actually one of the reasons i was excited to come with you is because i wanted to i was excited but i wanted to see this for myself i wanted to see uh, you know, side of Japan you, that most you, people don't see. A lot of people almost don't believe it. Right, exactly. Mm -hmm. <sighs> well, it's there. There are almost 10,000 homeless people in Japan and millions on public assistance. And with Japan's rapidly aging population, the number of people in need is only going to get much bigger in the next 10 years. I hope that this video raises awareness for these issues. I know not a lot of people want to talk about this, but it's very important. And above all, I hope it encourages you to go to the video description and donate to the organization that is helping homeless people in Japan and hoping for a better future.